Hello, welcome to this lesson of the AC Circuit Analysis Tutor. In the last section and the last several sections, we have described these sinusoidal functions that we're going to study so much uh, in all of our AC analysis circuits. We're going to be driving the circuit with some sort of sinusoid, which will be a cosine function. Uh, we talked about the frequency, the amplitude, the phase angle. I want to give you some practice with those things with real problems, but before I do that, I want to talk about something um, that you're going to see in your book confuses a lot of students, but it's very easy to understand. It's called the root mean square of a sinusoidal function. Sounds very complicated, but basically it boils down to trying to um, to trying to look at the sinusoid and sort of figure out what an average value would be for that sinusoid because uh, it's going to be important later on when we do calculations, especially power calculations. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Um, remember the um, uh, the general form of, of all of these functions that we're going to use to drive our circuits, uh, if it's a voltage, for instance, would be uh, the amplitude. So this could be 10 volts or whatever. And it's going to be times the cosine of omega t plus some phase angle phi. So basically, as time marches on, then this number goes up, up, up. And so the argument inside increases as time goes on. And so we trace out this cosine function. So if we were to draw this just real quickly again, I know we've drawn it several times, so I'll make it really short uh, here. The cosine function, uh, if there's no phase angle, if the phase angle is zero, then it's gonna start up here and kind of go down and up like this. And we've talked about this many times. The reason I'm drawing it again is because, let me ask you a question. Um, what do you think the average value of this would be? I mean, we know that because of the sinusoid here, it can only go up to a maximum of Vm and a minimum of Vm, of negative Vm, because the amplitude is defined here, so that's the distance from the axis up here. But what if I wanted to find the average value? I mean, we know that power is gonna end up being consumed by devices. Um, you know, let's say you have a resistor in there, voltage across it, current's gonna go through it, power will be, will be dissipated. We're gonna talk a lot about power later, right? But the only trick with it here is that the current goes in the resistor and then it turns around and goes the other way and then it goes the other way and then it goes the other way. So it's constantly oscillating back and forth. Now we know that the electrons are still flowing through the resistor. So no matter which way they're going, power is going to be dissipated in that resistor. So surely with AC analysis, resistors will dissipate power. Um, but the problem is, how do you calculate that power? Um, because usually, uh, in the DC analysis, everything was constant. So we just knew the value of the current, the value of the voltage drop, P is equal to I times V. Or for resistors, you could say I squared R, or V squared over R. But in 